Now, we wanted to show you this. It's the Elizabeth emblem. It's a new honour to uh, reward people, recognise people who've lost their lives while undertaking public service. It'll be given posthumously to the families of police officers, firefighters, ambulance staff and other public workers as a mark of recognition. And it's available for all those who lost their lives since 1948. It's the equivalent of the Elizabeth Cross, just there, which is awarded to members of the armed forces who've lost their lives in combat. Families are now able to apply for the emblem online via the government website. Applications will then be considered by the George Cross Committee, who oversee all gallantry awards. Now, none of this would have been possible without the efforts of Bryn Hughes, who spent years campaigning for a medal to honour emergency service workers killed in the line of duty in memory of his daughter, Nicola. And Roger Johnson has been speaking to Bryn. As a grieving father, and you, you, you grieve every day, that gives you that space. You're, you're running wherever you're running, on the, on the hills where I live, and you just, you're alone with your thoughts, and, and you can process your thoughts or attempt to process your thoughts. To get through it, you've got to put one foot in front of the other. And, and that's what I viewed my, my journey through the grief process, if you like, by putting one foot in front of the other. Over the past decade, Bryn Hughes has run thousands of miles, some of them in the most extreme conditions. It's helped him cope with the murder of his only daughter, Nicola. Two police officers have been killed in Greater Manchester after responding to what turned out to be a bogus... I tend to forget what she sounded like, what her voice was like, so I'd, I'd go through that and I'd, I'd relive happy memories, I suppose, and what would she be doing, what, what would she make of what I were doing, what would she be saying? Since Nicola's death, Bryn has campaigned tirelessly in her name, setting up a charity to help children who are bereaved through violent crime. This memorial stone, close to where Nicola was killed, is one of the only public acknowledgements of her sacrifice. They mean different things at different times, I suppose, but there's no official state recognition um, of what happened for Nicola and Fiona and, and other officers and other emergency service workers and public sector workers. Nearly two years ago, he embarked on a new mission. Good morning, welcome to breakfast. Calls for emergency service workers killed in the line of duty to be honoured with a special medal from the father of a police officer shot dead while attending a 999 call. His call for a posthumous honour for emergency service workers received support from countless families in similar situations. Hello, Bryn. Pleased to meet you. I'm Chris, it's a pleasure to meet you. His campaign brought him face to face with politicians. Month after month, he was promised something was coming. We are determined, Mr Speaker, to ensure that sacrifice that police officers and other public service officers make is recognised. And I hope we will be able to announce something very soon. What's your reaction to that? I'd say confusing and disappointing. Those disappointments could have beaten Bryn, but he's proved repeatedly since Nicola's death that he will not be defeated. And now he's had the news that he's been waiting for. The Elizabeth emblem will be introduced, recognising the sacrifice made not just by emergency services staff, but by all public sector workers who lose their lives in the course of doing their jobs. I was always thinking it's going to be a dozen, two dozen people, but you're talking hundreds, if not thousands of people. Um, and I suppose I take some pride out of that, but I also take some pride about what the rest of us have done from that, the rest of the people involved. And that would be some legacy for Nicola Hughes and Bryn Hughes. She'd be really proud. And I think she'd be embarrassed that it'd be, not, not in her name, but associated with her, she'd, she'd be, oh, well, this is, this is for me, this is because of me. We're now joined by Bryn, alongside some of the many families who can now apply for the Elizabeth emblem. We're going to speak to each of them very shortly. But first, let's come to you, Bryn, because I know this is something that... It's taken a long time to get here, hasn't it? Um, yeah. But you didn't ever give up? No, never never once, never once get up. And, and, it, and yeah, it's been a long journey, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's come to fruition to see so many people here this morning. It's just, just a small 
sample all those who are eligible. It's, it's unbelievable. And how much does it mean now to have this Elizabeth emblem? It's, I mean, it's a mixture of emotions, and I've had a few days to process, you know, actually receiving it, but now seeing people here again this morning, it means, again, it means so much. There's, there's, and it quite rightly so that they're all remembered. I think it was here on the sofa, wasn't it, that you first talked publicly it, it, about this desire. Yes, yes. To see it finally happen. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And it's good to be on the sofa again and, and share it with all these people as well, so, yeah. Paul, uh, you are dad of PC Fiona Bone, of course. Yes. Your story and Bryn's story uh, linked like in twins. the most awful way. Yes. Yeah. Um, how does it feel for you now to have this moment, to have this award? It's an honour, really. Um, and Fiona, as we're discussing outside, would have probably laughed at it um, because she was just doing her job. Um, but for the families and for my family, it's great that the state is finally recognising the loss of all these people that will be eligible for this matter. When you say you, she, she would probably laugh about it, what, what do you mean by that? Well, she'd be a bit embarrassed and, you know, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> what, what's the big deal? Um, you know, <clears throat> it, that's what it means, she has a laugh at it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. we will. But help. to you, it's, yes. I imagine, so much more... Yes, it, it, it's a lovely mark of respect and probably wear it in the next Remembrance Day or something. It's exactly that selfless duty yeah. that's being <laughs> rewarded, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And what does that give to you? A feeling of pride, and pride in my daughter uh, and satisfaction that her job was well-deserved and, and, and she did the job well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jane and Adrian, if I could talk to you, Jane, you, you, you're the daughter of PC Ray Davenport, mm -hmm. um, another serving officer. Yeah. You will be applying for this emblem. Yes. With yeah. great pride. Yes. Are you sad, resentful that, that it's taken time for this to happen, that this didn't exist already? It's, it's sad it didn't exist already. I can understand, and I can understand how it takes so long. Um, which I can only now thank, obviously, um, Paul for, for how tirelessly he's worked um, in you know, getting this through. Um, but we've got it, you know, and that's... We look now to the positive. The families are able now to apply for this, um, and quite rightly so. So it's a positive now. Um, it has been a long time coming, um, but it's something that we've got, and, you know, it's a big family, and we'll be wearing it with pride. Because your dad, Ray, was killed on duty in the, in the 80s. 81, it? yeah. 81, he was killed, yes. Um, similar circumstances to Debbie's son, you know, stolen vehicle. Um, I was 13 at the time, so um, it's been a long time now. Dad was awarded the Queen's Commendation for Bravery, but this is nice to be recognised now for all the other families. And, Debbie, like everybody here this morning, you all have this awful connection. You've all lost someone you love who was who lost their life in the line of duty, who would, they were just doing their job and didn't come home. And I know, Debbie, lots of people watching this morning will know of the story of your son, PC Andrew Harper, who was killed while doing his job. Um, how much comfort will you take from being able to apply for the Elizabeth emblem in his name? Um, everything to do with Andrew, we're proud of. Um, it's tricky because we're not next of kin, so we can apply, from what I understand, for a scroll rather than the actual emblem itself. Um, but that's something I want to look further into because I think the next of kin issue is something that's cropped up so many times since we've lost Andrew that it's a huge issue. Um, and I think that really ought to be changed going forward. But the medal... Um, it's that national recognition, you know, what they've actually... I mean, particularly with Andrew, what he suffered at the time. Um, our lives are never, ever going to be anywhere near what we recognise them to be before. They look the same on the outside. Inside, I don't feel the same person. I struggle with trying to move on. Um, and these things are really the kind of things that I think give us a boost to know that 
it's not forgotten. You know, the... I know the nation pretty much on a whole is behind us and really were affected by Andrew's loss. Um, I'm just grateful that Britain's carried this through to fruition, you know, because this national recognition is really important. They're serving the public. They're going out every day risking everything and we've, we've all paid the price in full. Yeah. So. Adrian, um, your father, Ross Hunt, another officer killed on duty. Now the opportunity to, to receive the emblem for your family. But what strikes me, we're talking about individual families here, but do you feel connected to one another as, as a larger campaigning extended family as well, a, a bond with these other people with you? Absolutely. Um, we spoke about this before, Bryn and I, in particular, about two years ago when the campaign was ongoing. Um, and as much as we don't want to be part of that club, we haven't been, you know, it wasn't something we expected to be part of in our lives, but sadly, it's happened. And we do, and, and, and we are um, connected in that way. But having, you know, I've, there's some families that I've met just in the last day or so, and we have that commonality and connection. And, and it's, all of a sudden, it's just come through and it's, it's clear that, yes, we have that connection. And, you know, from people who are, have come from different walks of life and um, we, we haven't met each other, um, we have that connection. And, and, and that's a strong connection. And I'm, I'm just strong. So that gives you strength. strength. That it does give that strength. strength. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does actually give that strength. Because for years and years, there was, there was nothing. And as been said, um, in particular with the uh, award, the fact that, that there is that recognition um, we've waited for, you know, well, in my particular instance, is over 40 years for recognition. So to have that is just fantastic. Bryn, just, just listening to some of the stories that we've heard so far, what, what's that like for you? A bit overwhelming, actually. It's, yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I knew, you know, what was going to happen, but when you, when you actually hear things like from what, what Debbie and, and Jane and Adrian said, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, but it makes me feel proud as well. We've talked about police officers killed on duty, but this affects all services. And we're also joined on the sofa by the family of uh, Jeremy Dawe, known as Jack. Good morning to, to all of you. Uh, Dawn, you were Jeremy's wife, and he was an ambulance technician, yep. wasn't he? Yeah. Who went back to serve during the pandemic. Tell yep. us about him. So, so he was a paramedic to start off with, and then he retired in November of 2020. Um, and then he went back in January of 2021 um, as a technician, which is um, part-time. And um, anyway, after a few weeks, he decided that he would retire at the end of April. And sadly, he was killed on the 21st of April. So, yeah. And, Kate, what did your dad's job mean to him? I imagine having heard he'd retired and at a time of national crisis, he felt the need to go back. Imagine it meant a huge amount. Yeah. He never said he loved his job. He was very dedicated to it and he did the job very well. And losing him for us as a family is just, you, it, you can't describe it. And, you know, we've all been through individual things ourselves, haven't we? And it is just indescribable. It really is. Your brother Richard's here. Richard, we've talked about what, what the families hope to gain from the emblem. What do you think your dad would have thought of this emblem? Um, I think, personally, he'd have been... Not for me. I don't need that. I'm just like... <laughs> everybody else probably echo. I was just doing my job. So... But for him to be recognised, you know, and to get the award, fantastic. Family, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very, very proud and very grateful to Bryn. And you say, you know, you all have your own individual stories of how your loss has affected you. Um, I know for some of you it's a, a, a longer time ago, but for some of you it's really very, very recent. Um, what sort of things have you had to go through to get to this point? I imagine at times it's been really tough. It has been tough. I, as I say, I mean, this year would have been our golden wedding anniversary so we got married I was 18 
So I've been with him all of my life. So now it's a completely different life that I've got to lead. So, but I have got good family, so, yep, good support. Rich is raising his eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, chief, I'm, I'm chief of the family now, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 You're boss. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely the boss. He's yeah. the boss. And it's amazing how in, in, the, in the depths of these moments that you've all been through individually, that you, you've... Paul, you, you, you find strength from the people among you, from, from your families, but also your communities as well, the yeah, communities yeah. that your relatives all served. I, I mean, amongst other things, you actually join the larger community of, of police and ambulance workers, and, and you have the common bond uh, of the loss. I mean, and the way you support it is, is usually quite good. <laughs> and when a member, you know, I'm sure lots of us have members of family, you know, working in these frontline professions. When a member of your family starts a career like this, joins up in whatever form it is, whatever the job is, does that worry ever cross your mind? It, Do you think this might happen to my child? It didn't. I was trying to get her to join the Air Force, but she thought, thought it was too boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so she joined the police for something different every day. And until you're in the police, or the ambulance service or any other service, I don't really think you appreciate how many people die on duty. Because yeah. <laughs> it just passes you by, yeah. you know. Yeah. And <clears throat> I had had a conversation with... I was in the prison service myself, and I'd had this conversation with Nicola about you're going to get in scrapes, you're going to get in fights and assaulted, but I think never in your wildest nightmares you expect this ultimate to happen. And, and when, you, when you say you, you, expect, you don't, you don't expect it. You expect them to come home with a black eye or something like that, but no, yeah. yeah. Debbie, I remember sitting in court during the trial when, uh, after Andrew was killed uh, as a reporter. Um, and for, for, for all of you, I guess it's, that's the moment when you reflect on, on the choice that your loved ones made to serve. Do you ever think, I, I wish he'd never done it, I wish he'd never followed this job, or... Was it no, so much a part I, of his... I think he was perfectly set into that role. That was him through and through. Um, I've had ex some conversations with um, a chief constable who has actually come back to us initially, and she said to us, he helped me through my own domestic violence. I was in the police force. I was, you know, she was high up, and she was going through, through domestic violence, and Andrew actually took such good care of her he kept going back and going back. She said he went way beyond. So much as I know we've lost him, it was, it was his job, it's what he wanted to do. And I just have to remind myself that we were lucky that he was ours for a while we had him. You know, the acceptance is a very tricky thing to get around. But he was in the right job. Yeah. He just got unlucky. Yeah. And Adrian, I imagine... For other families who have lost people many, many years ago, this now must be a moment of immense pride and a connection to someone who's gone from your lives many, many years previously. Absolutely. Um, we had a conversation just before we came in, and, and as much as um, that knock on the door at two o'clock in the morning for, for, for me, and I answered the door, um, just myself and my mother in the house, and being told that uh, your father had been involved in an incident. Um, and the unfortunate for me back, way back then was that, well, um, I was a young police cadet, aged 18, and asked the question of senior management at the time was, did my father merit any award? And was told at the time, no, he doesn't merit any award. Wow. By the management at the time. And that has, Wrestle. I've, I've wrestled with that for a long, long time. Um, and that was why the persistence in keeping going with this campaign was so important. Jane, I can see you nodding. You, you can, you've been through the same as well. Yeah. It's been a long wait. Yeah, it has. I, I was 13, so it wasn't... Obviously, I didn't get the knock at the door. Mum did and then told me, you know, at the appropriate time. Um, but it is, it's a long, it's, what, 43 years um, for me. Um, as I said before, fortunate my dad was recognised for the Queen's accommodation for bravery. 
Um, and I can't believe some of the stories that we've, we've talked about where other officers haven't received because it's bravery. The minute you put that uniform on, you start your shift, you're going out there, it's the unknown. No two days are the same. And you deal... We run towards... Police officers run towards the danger and it's bravery and they should be recognised. However, this now is something that's, you know, again, it's positive and it's for the families and it is that rec recognition. Yeah. And Dawn, I I'm sure lots of people who've heard your story this morning will be wondering how, how you are. How, you know, it's still quite new, isn't it? So it is still how new. are you managing? <clears throat> I just get up in the morning, Sally, and, and take the day as it comes. You know, so I just get on with it. I said, I, it's what it is, you know. We, I can't do anything to change it now, so I just have to keep going, keep moving on. I've still got family and friends which support me, so, yeah. When you get that medal, as I'm sure you all will when, you, when it's up and running, this scheme, to have that and to be able to hold that and yeah. to have that connection, what yeah. will that feel like, to open the box and see it? It'll make us very proud, won't it? Definitely. Very proud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jeremy, Jeremy's accident, his, his was like an accident, really. He was, you know, in an ambulance going on a job and a stone came from a quarry lorry and hit him. So it was just wrong place at wrong time. So, yeah. And, Bryn, hearing all these stories, I know this is a question I've asked you before, but can you believe it's taken this long? Um, Why has it taken this long? Was there resistance? I think I don't think it was resistance, but the way it was explained um, with various meetings over, over the years that we've had is it, it, it needs to be done correctly. And, and the amount of different departments involved, they all have some input, so that takes time. And, and you'll know better than you know, the, the wheels of government turn slightly slower than what we, we would want them to. Um, so that, that's been the, the main um, delay, if you like. You are just some of the families. Yeah. There will be many families watching this morning who are tragically in the same position as all of you and have been over decades, going back decades and decades. Should there be some kind of moment, some kind of service or ceremony, as well as applying for, for it's these It's funny you should say that, because I... I, <laughs> I Go on. Saturday evening I was working on that with um, a possible very nice um, venue, a uh, big venue that... We, put, we could all possibly in, be in there. So. I can't, I can't so there, name it at the moment. There is a, <laughs> there is a possibility yes. that families might be able to come together yeah. for a moment of remembrance. Yes. yes. Somewhere big enough to hold everybody. Big enough, yes. And, and, that would be quite and fit, big. And fitting enough, yeah, as well. So, yes. I was, um, a venue of national importance. Yes, yes. I was working on that on Saturday night. I was enjoying a party, but I was working at the same time. And yeah. when might that happen? Um, well, I think it depends on when people actually apply and when they receive them. And we, I think there's going to be a lot of coordination to be, to be done. So I think we, the hard work starts now. We know when, when Bryn starts the hard work, we know what's <laughs> going to happen, don't we? Debbie, what would that mean to you? Um, it, to come together, not just in these numbers, but even greater numbers? I completely agree with what was said earlier. Oh getting to know people that have had the same experiences of, of losing somebody in such a tragic way goes further than any other healing thing that I've come across so far. We've made some very, very close bonds. Um, we couldn't make it if we weren't in the same boat. And that means so much to me. I know I've always got people to lean on um, and they totally understand me. You know, I know other parents, they totally understand me. Um, and I, without that, I think you feel very much at a loose end and you're kind of flailing, you know, you, you need somebody to channel your feelings with that understands. It's that absolutely getting you that makes a huge difference and I think that's one of the things that's going to be a common, obviously, benefit for anybody to, yeah. to attend. I guess it's that thing, isn't it, that we might say to you, I can't imagine what you're going through but you all know only yeah. too well what you've yeah. all been through, so you yeah. can bring that share and collective strength. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for coming in uh, and for your families who aren't here necessarily uh, in force today. But um, it's something we will keep in contact with you about and uh, we'll keep across in the months ahead. It sounds like Bryn's got more plans. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank all you. of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you.